Hello there, linear systems and matrices folks. This is going to be a quick video for two purposes. One, so I can test out this handy new gizmo I got that allows me to record handwriting from overhead. This is the debut video uh, with this feature in use, so you guys ought to be pretty excited about this. Um, also, just an extra little piece of information with an example or two to help you out on a concept that is usually one of the sticky points and that we didn't have a whole lot of time for in class on Tuesday. And that has to do with expressing the solution set to a system of linear equations when you have infinitely many solutions. Because just saying you have infinitely many solutions to a system does not mean that everything is a solution. There's still a pattern to the solution set and there's still information you can provide about what the coordinates look like. All right, so let's jump like two thirds of the way into an example. Let's suppose you were given a system of three equations and three unknowns and you loaded up the augmented coefficient matrix you waved your magic wand to get it in reduced row echelon form, and this is what you ended up seeing. So top row of 1, 0, negative 1, 3. Second row of 0, 1, 2, 4. And a third row of 0, 0, 0, 0. So there we have the augmented coefficient matrix that's been reduced to row echelon form. The row at the bottom with all the zeros is your clue that we're going to have infinitely many solutions. Because under normal, ideal circumstances, we would like to see a unique solution, right? And generally, the top row tells us about x, the second row tells us about y, and the third row tells us about z. Well, the third row isn't really going to tell us anything about z. So we, we have an infinite number of solutions but we don't yet know what they look like, but the information is still there. Remember that at any point you can go back and forth between a row in this matrix and the equation that's hiding in the background. So the first row tells us this relationship. There's one X, there's zero Y's, there's a negative Z, and that's equal to three. In the second row, there's no X's, there's one Y, there's plus two Z's equals four. That's what we know about this system. This is the reduced form of the system of equations. So we don't have enough information to say anything about unique values for x, y, and z. But we do have relationships to say, aha, if we could pick a value for z, then x and y would surely be determined, right? Because if we solve these in terms of z, the first equation turns into x equals 3 plus z, and y equals 4 minus 2z, like that. So again, no information about z off the bat, but if we could provide a value for z, then x and y are determined. z is now called a free parameter. It can be anything. There's nothing that precludes it from being any particular value. We can pick anything we want for z, and so having done that, x and y are determined. So if we picked z equals 2, then x would be 5 and y would be 0 and so on. And so in general, the solution set to this system x, y, z will look like, well, we'll decide what it looks like, right? We still have to provide the description of the solution set. Just saying infinitely many isn't enough information. Z is a free parameter. Z can be anything. So Z is just Z, right? That's, that's very Zen. But z is z. Z is whatever it wants to be. But given that z has been picked to a particular value, the x-coordinate would be 3 plus that value, and the y-coordinate would be 4 minus 2 times that value. And this is the form of the solution set that you want to provide for that system. Here's another example where we have a system of four equations and four unknowns put into its augmented coefficient matrix, row reduced with Gaussian elimination down to this point. There's four variables in here, four unknowns. So let's say their names are x, y, z, and w, like that. And we're trying to discover what the solutions are. Well, from the rows of all zeros, again, that's your visual cue that there are infinitely many solutions to this system of equations. What do those infinitely many solutions look like? Well, we're not provided any information about z and w. So z and w, will be free parameters. Then from the top equation,
we learn that x plus 3z plus w equals 2, right? The coefficients in the top equation tell us that that, or in the top row, tell us that that equation is hiding in the background. And the second row tells us that y plus z minus 2w equals 3, like that. Solve these for x and y x equals 2 minus 3z minus w, y equals 3 minus z plus 2w, and now we know the characteristics of the system. We're looking for unknowns x, y, z, and w. We're not going to find unique solutions. We're going to find infinitely many. There is the setup for the four spots. Z and W are known to be free parameters, meaning that Z and W get to just be Z and W. But once we provide values for Z and W, then the X coordinate is pinned to X, sorry, 2 minus 3Z minus W. The Y coordinate is pinned to 3 minus Z plus 2W. Like that. One more example. Here's a third example where you can have a free parameter and an infinite number of solutions that have to be described properly. There is no row of all zeros here, but note that in this augmented coefficient matrix, it's not a square system. There's four unknowns. Let's call them x, y, z, and w, perhaps. But there's only three equations, so there's no way to provide unique single values for x, y, z, and w. However, once more reading out the equations, in the background, the top row tells us that x plus 4w equals 2. The second row tells us that y minus w equals 5. And the third row tells us that z plus 2w equals negative 2. So those are the three relationships between our four variables, and it turns out we still have a free parameter here because these equations tell us we'll never find x, y, z, and w specifically to unique values, but say if we were to be given a value for w, then we could discover x, y, and z. So solving these equations for, for in terms of w, x equals 2 minus 4w from the top one, y equals... 5 plus w from the second one, and z equals negative 2 minus 2w for the third one. So we're after a solution set x, y, z, w. Get it ready right there. We can't pin them down to unique values, but if we choose a value for w, we can pick anything because there's nothing that stops it from being any particular value. But given a value of w, then x is 2 minus 4w, y is 5 plus w, and z is negative 2 minus 2w, like that. And that would be the solution set for this system, a free parameter locking down an infinite number of solutions.